Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Fazel. I have Ryan on the call with me. We are your hosts for the Power Hour. Hi, the good evening. New uh, Power BI live sessions every Wednesday from half two to half three Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we are from Trinidad and Tobago. We work at Intelligent Applications. And we wanted to start these sessions to bring awareness to Power BI and to bolster the knowledge of Power BI in the general populace. All right. So who are we intelligent applications? Drive your company's success through data you can act on immediately. So we're a data company. We do all things data and software development. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to welcome each and every one of you to our first session. Um, this is an introduction to Power BI. Uh, we kind of designed it for the very beginner to understand from entry level. Uh, so it might be a little basic for some of you but we want to start everyone at the same level, right? Um, Ryan, anything you need to add there? Okay, since we've lost Ryan temporarily. Um, Okay, so what is Power BI? Right, Power BI is a suite of business analytic tools. Uh, there are two methods for using Power BI. You can use it as an extension of an existing BI solution at your company or you can use it as a self-service self -service analytic tool, right? With Power BI, you can connect to multiple data sources, prepare that data, transform it, and use stunning visuals to do your reports. According to the Gartner report, early 2019, it placed Microsoft as a leader for business intelligence and analytic platforms. This is why we prefer to use Power BI. There are multiple other solutions out there, but we prefer Power BI. Now, before I said you could use Power BI in two ways. So this is just the overall framework of what business intelligence is. So your data sources as a company or an organization, you have data from multiple sources, maybe an Excel document, SQL Server, Oracle Server, um, it might be live systems such as SAP, Maximo, Info EAM, etc. Right, so that data, we do what we call ETL, extract, transform, and load. And we store all that data in a centralized data store, data warehouse, right? Now the first way we could plug Power BI into this existing architecture, which is the reporting and analytics, and you could build your reports from there. However, Power BI, you can do each of, the, each of these steps within Power BI itself, which is why we say self-service analytics, okay? So how do you get Power BI? Power BI is available in two flavors. There's the Power BI desktop, which is free, free to use on your desktop. However, there are certain limitations. And there's the Power BI Pro, which allows you to use Power BI web service and you can publish your reports, etc. Now the Power BI desktop, which is the free version, is available 
on the Microsoft Store. You can download it on your Microsoft Store. Or you can go to powerbi.microsoft.com and under products you will see Power BI Desktop. Here you can download it for free. However, I should mention that the download is currently only available for Windows. So Mac users will have to purchase the Power BI Pro license and use Power BI web service to build their reports. Right? The cost for the Power BI Pro license is 10 US per user per month. Right? And it gives you a host of features, especially for publishing and sharing reports that you can take advantage of. Okay, so now I want to show you around the tool. So if we open up Power BI, you give that a second. Alright, while Power BI is opening, um, Ryan, do you have anything to add so far to what we have discussed? Uh, not right now. I think you covered more or less everything. Okay, cool. Um, right, just going to X this off. Okay, so this is Power BI Desktop. I'm just going to give you the overall flow of the interface. Mm -hmm. All right, so at the top we have the home ribbon. And the first thing you'll notice is the get data. So get data. Here is how you would connect to your multiple data sources. As you can see at the top, we have Excel, which is probably the most common uh, data source that one might use in our daily usage. Um, we have SQL Server, the analysis services, etc. Right? Um, transform data so this opens up the Power BI Power Query which is similar to Power Query if you have used it on Excel okay. then we have the feature to add visuals text boxes and other visuals now you would see here the grayed out features new measure quick measure and publish right for those we would need to have a data set here and we will talk about DAX which is functions in Power BI to do calculated measures in our further session. Right here we have the insert tab so you could add pages similar to Excel so you could add multiple pages to your report. Right? Um, you could connect Power Apps which is another Microsoft product straight into Power BI and data modeling and you could set up a team so if you do a a, a scheduled a report you could have the team set so you don't have to spend that same time formatting the report constantly all right let's so back to the main features so on the left hand side we have three icons, the report and view, which is what we are currently on, right? And then we have the data view. Here you will see all your data sets. And we have the model view. Here you would see your relationship diagrams, etc. Right? One thing I forget to mention on the report view is we have the filters tab. Right, so here you would have your various filters, the visualizations tab. Here you have a 
a host of uh, visuals that you can use on Power BI. So we have bar graphs, line charts, donut, pie charts, etc. And you are not only limited to using these visuals here. If you clicked on the three dots, get more visuals. Right. So okay, so it's asking me to sign in. Alright, I might have to sign in to show you guys that additional feature, but basically it connects you to the Microsoft App Source where you could get custom and third party visuals and you could use it into your Power BI reports. Now the fields tab is currently blank, but here you would see your data set tables and columns etc right now the objective today for the intro to power bi is we want to get you guys from having a simple data set in excel we want to import our data into power bi we want to view the data in the power query editor now the data set that we're going to use is very simple and it might not need a lot of cleaning etc and we are intending to have the other session next week on data transformation so you could see how to clean some data and some other transformation techniques all right so we want to look at the data in the power query editor we want to import it into our power bi file and we want to build a simple report using some visuals. All right. Cool. All right. Anything I missed out so far? No, you seem to be on the right track. All right. Cool. All right. Well, let's take a look at this Excel file I have. So this is a simple sales data set. Right. Now the data, as I said, is fairly clean, so we might not have any transformations, if any, to do on this data set. Right. So we have our row ID, which is a unique identifier, an order ID, order date, shipment date, customer, um, segment, we have country, city, state, right, region some product information product category product name and what we want to report on our sales quantity discounts and profit all right so we're going to show you guys how to import this data okay so back to your blank power bi file and we're going to click on get data we're going to click on Excel and as you can see for our episode one I have this data set here sample superstore data set so it's a fictional superstore sales data set we'll click open Right, uh, we could see the two sheets that were in that Excel file uh, show up here. And if you click on each of them, you could get a preview of the data that is on those sheets. Right. Salesperson. Now to import, it's important to click the checkbox on the left hand side of the sheets so they get imported. Now I'm going to click on transform data. I could click on load and it would load the data directly into the Power BI file. However, it's a good idea to, to click transform. It takes you to the Power Query Editor window and there you could scrutinize your data and perform simple data transformations or cleaning. Alright, so let's just take a look at that. Now, for anyone, if I am moving too quickly, 
um, we will be posting the video afterwards so you could always go back and rewatch the section that you want to, um, to review right so no worries there okay so we're in the power query editor window and you could see we have our two sheets right so our orders data set as i said is pretty clean but i'll just go over some of the menu items on what we could do um, so the important things to note on this window is making sure that the columns are accurate and as you could see on the left hand side of the column name you would see these little icons and if you click on that that basically sets the data type of the column so very important sometimes right so sometimes um if you import data and you're building a report and trying to do a calculation and you're getting errors it might be because column that is supposed to be a decimal or whole number is set to text so that's something to look out for all right um guys if you have any questions uh please type in chat and we will try to address as many of the questions uh, in the closing 10 to 15 minutes of the live session. If there are any questions that we're unable to answer today, we will be um, looking at it and we will try to answer it in our follow-up follow session. All right? Okay, back to the Power Query Editor. All right? So some of the things you can do here, you could remove columns that you don't want to want that you don't want in the data set uh, sometimes you might have um, null rows or columns that you want to remove we have the merge queries and the append mm -hmm. queries the merge queries is simple if you want to join two tables we have the normal options right um, left outer right um, inner joins etc the append queries is if you have another document with a similar structure you could click append queries and it would add those rules to the same document now i am just speaking about it at the moment um in our follow-up session on data transformations we will be demonstrating all of these features in transformations Right. So continuing here. Right. Transpose. Add columns. Conditional columns. Um, index columns for unique identifiers. Extract text. Formatting. Etc. Right. Let's take a look at the salesperson sheet here we can see the column names are column one and column two so this is an, this is an example where we would need to do some uh, transformation a simple transformation we would click on this table and we would click use first row as headers okay. so if i click that right see that so now our first row is now our headers, person and region. Another cool thing of the our query editor is that it tracks the steps. Right? It tracks the steps that you have applied to the data set. So as you can see, source navigation. So if I undo if I undo the last change, which is uh, use the first row as headers, you can see it undoes it, right? So let's click that back. All right, so basically, why it keeps track of the steps? 
one so you could easily undo actions and two if you were to add records to this data set and you click refresh it would rerun all these steps on the new data so you don't have to go back and do these same transformations every time you need to update the data right okay cool um ryan you have more experience with data transformations anything you would like to add to this introductory session i think you covered most of the basics so that would be good enough for now and should cover a lot of the fairly simple cases we could go more into detail at a later video. Yeah, sounds, sounds good to me because um, some of the transformation techniques might take a little longer than what time we have today. So I think a whole session on data transformations might be more beneficial. All right, cool. Okay, so now that our data set is ready, we can click close and apply. Right. Our BI loads the data into the model. Now, some limitations that you should be aware of. In Power BI Desktop, which is the free version, you are allowed to import one gig of data into the tabular model. Um, How many rows would you say that amounts to Ryan? I mean, we have imported um, maybe 30 million. Yeah, I definitely know I did the 30 million and I did not cross the one gig limit, so. Yeah, I think that was around 700 megabytes, but uh, it depends on the amount of um, columns, of course. Um, but I feel most end users should be able to import data at their leisure without having to worry. Only if you go in sort of enterprise, you might have to worry about that one gig limit. Yeah, that, that's true. Right, so as Ryan mentions enterprise, so the Power BI Pro license, with the Power BI Pro license, you get up to 10 gigs um, storage on your Power BI, right? So the limit goes up to 10 gigs. Um, now, if you're using some other enterprise solution, um, solution and you're only using Power BI as the reporting tool, then you don't have any set limit, such as if you were connecting to the analysis, analysis services cube, etc. Right? Okay. So back to our Power BI demo. We have, you see in fields, our two tables up here, orders, right? And you could expand and see all the columns. And we could expand on another table, salesperson, and we could see the columns in there as well. All right, let's take a look on the data view. All right, so our orders table, we could see the data sales now this is the model view so here we could see that our bi automatically made a relationship in this model it has connected region with sales person Right, so based on your data set, Power BI will try to make these connections. However, I would advise that you do check each of them as some might be erroneous. Um, right now, data modeling is a whole other topic that we could speak on and it will be featured in a future video. Um, yeah, data modeling is a, a big topic and definitely an important part of any BI solution. Right, we will talk about DIMS and facts, um, different modeling techniques such as um, Snowflake, Star Schema, etc. Right. 
um okay so that is fine uh you could also right click these to get more information such as the cardinality etc but as i said we will try to cover most of this in our data modeling session okay Okay, so this blank area is called the canvas, right? And here is where we will build our reports. Let's just close this filter tab. Now the filtering, that is another feature we will showcase sometime. For the purposes of this video, we just want to show how to build a simple report using a couple of visuals in Power BI, right? so this is the canvas you can click on a visual so say for example we wanted to see the sales by month right sales by month so let's select a, a column chart or as we say a bar chart right now this this visual we call this a tile, right? So uh, a page of a report comprises multiple tiles. Now you can move these tiles around. You can expand them, etc. Right? So this is a column chart or a bar chart, right? And we want to see sales by month. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the order date as our axis. Now this is something interesting. This is the Power BI date hierarchy. What Achizo does is classify the dates by year, quarter, month, and day. Um, what we usually have when we do our data modeling is we have a day table that does this. And we will be showing you how to create that in our video as well. That's a very important part of any um, data set analysis. However, Power BI tries to do this as well. Right, so I want to see it by year and month. Right, so that is our x-axis. And the value that we want to report on is sales. So you could click on the checkbox, or I like I prefer to click and drag. Right? So I pull in sales into value. And you could see my report, my visual, sorry, has been populated. Right? I could see my sales by year. If I have on the bars, I could see the amount. Right? All right, um, so you would also notice on the date axis, I have two options here, year and month. You would also see this double arrow down that says go to the next level in the hierarchy. So if I want to go to the next level of the date hierarchy, so I want to see month, I click on the double down. And I can see the sales by month. Now, this isn't necessarily accurate as it is aggregating all the sales data over all the years into the 12 calendar months. So, what we want to do to make this more accurate is add a filter. Okay. Sorry. So if we add a slicer or filter, right? and we want to filter by year. So we pull in data again. Let's go date hierarchy. And we want to see year. So if I click on a year, it filters the entire data set for that year alone. And now this is a more accurate representation 
of sales per month by year. Okay, now when we do a data table, which we will show you guys sometime, you would actually have a column called month year, right? So you don't necessarily have to use this method. All right, so I want to put my, my year filter up on the top here. And I want to create this as a drop down. Right? So I could come here and click on a particular year. And that's it. Alright, let's make this a little bigger. Okay. Cool. Now, the next thing I want to see is. I want to see the sales, my sales by product, right? So again, we select what visual we want to use. In this case, I want to use a stock bar chart or in, I would say a horizontal bar chart, right? And I just want to make this put under here nicely. And again, our axis this time, we want to see product. So if I click on subcategory and the value we want to report on is sales. And just like that, my visual has been populated, right? And we could rename this product category All right um, so if you click on let's say chairs this is the interactive power of power bi so if i click on chairs as you can see my sales in 2015 by month, you can see what proportion of those sales which is, let's see, storage machines, right? So very useful. Okay, another cool thing we can do is I want to see the distribution of my sales by region and state so we could use a map visual okay so i could expand this out and for location i can use state for the legend I could distribute my areas by region and you could see the map is being populated so there's a bubble in any state where I have made a sale and what is more interesting is when I add when I add the sales value to the size data field You could see the size of the bubbles change based on the number of sales in that state, right? And we could interact with this. We could zoom in, we could hover on a bubble. We can see the state, its region, and the number of seals, right? And so if I click on September, everything on my graph filters because we are all reporting on sales and each of these visuals are using the sales value it's all interconnected okay. i click on a particular product you could see binders okay. it might be worth mentioning that this map can work with any address not just the American addresses 
definitely um, so if you click on this map um, this data set has mostly uh, US uh, location information that's why we're using state but however you could map any location that you want to use you could use um, geo coordinates latitude longitude or um, country codes and mm -hmm. territory codes etc right um, cool thanks for that Ryan uh, okay so we also want to see how our salesperson have done or the distribution of sales by region or salesperson so let's add a donor chart and see it automatically finds the spot on the canvas that has enough space and places the visual there for us automatically right now the legend is going to be person and the value is sales right so cassandra brando now you will notice some mismatch here. The data coloring on the donor chart is not accurate on the map visual. Now that might create uh, clarity issues when you're reporting and we have a lot of experience uh, with clients and doing these kind of reports and that is something that would be flagged. So what you would want to do is you want to match whatever colors these are here with the regions since it is a one-to-one -one mapping of salesperson to region you could go ahead and try to match the colors right so what you would do so for each visual there are three tabs the first one is the data field tab which we have been pulling data fields from our tables into the visual the second tab is the formatting tab so here you would change your data colors you would choose your legend um, title background border any kind of formatting to make your report look as outstanding as possible Right now, if we wanted to quarter coordinate this, we would see that this is blue and we could adjust this. Right. Cassandra is orange. Kelly is light blue. And Anna is purple. Right, so now when we filter, it should be matching up pretty accurately. Right. One other visual that we want to show you guys before we wrap up today's session is the card visual so definitely on a report you need to have the highlight numbers etc card visual is how you would do that so i like to put my card visuals at the top and here we want to see total sales total sales okay so we just drag sales into that data field Right now, you do have some formatting options, of course, the text size, labels, um, how you want the data to be displayed, um, such as number of decimal places, 
um, if you want it to the unit of measure, etc. Category label. Right, so display units. So if you select none, you will see the exact figure. And you could also set the number of decimal places. So if we didn't want to see the decimal places, that's fine. Yeah, let's put it back. And let's set our display units to auto. Right. And I could demonstrate this for you guys. If I change the year, you could see my sales figure changes as well. So everything is connected very visually interactive. All right, let me just add a couple more cards to round off this report. So you can copy and paste the visuals. Right. And then you could just go back and change the data field on them. So if I want to see total quantity of products sold and profit. Simple. All right. And again, the interactivity, if I click on a bar, everything on the page filters. So for me, 2016, I can see the sales, quantity and profit for that month. And we could see the sales by region, salesperson, and the breakdown of sales by product category. Right. Um, one last thing before we take your questions. As I said, Power BI, very interactive. There are two methods of the interactivity on Power BI. So far, you've seen the highlight feature. What I mean by that is I click on a particular visual, you see the highlighted value and you also see the entire value um, grayed out or lightened. Right? I can change this by going on Format, Edit Interactivity. And you would see these two little icons or three little icons popping up on visuals. What that means is right now it's currently set to highlight, but let's say we want to change these to filter instead. That way it gives a more visual impact when you try filtering things. Right, so you set your visual interaction to filter. And you click, you finish, you click edit interactions to deselect it. And now if I try to filter, you can see it just changes, the entire graph changes. It no longer just highlights the values, but the interactivity is filtering the entire visual. So very powerful, very useful. I hope this session was informative to you guys. As a, again, it's just an introduction to Power BI, um, very basic. Uh, we want the person who is just learning about Power BI to be able to pick it up and start creating some reports. And definitely in future sessions, we will be ramping up the um, difficulty and techniques and we want you guys to journey with us. Um, okay, so um, one of my colleagues just told me I could demo another feature to you guys. So you're not limited to just highlighting one particular uh, month or um, data point you could do multiple select using pulling down the control key on your keyboard so if I wanted to see the sales for the top three products I could click on chairs 
I could hold down control key on my keyboard and select phones and tables. Alright, so you can't do multiple select, you just have to hold down the control key. Right? I believe with the years as well, here yeah, you can do hold down the control key and you'll be able to do multiple select. Right? Um, right, so again, any questions, um, feel free to leave it in the chat. We'll try to answer them in the closing 15 minutes of this session. If we can't answer them in this session, we will try to do so in a future session. Um, ideas for future topics, or even if you have been using Power BI and um, wanted more knowledge on a particular feature or how to do something, let us know in the chat and we will be looking at it and trying to do some more videos to help you guys. Alright, Ryan, um, anything to add before we start looking at the questions? Um, no, not right now, but even, you know, if you're stuck on a very specific example or situation and just need an additional help, you could always comment here as well, too. We'll be glad to help. Um, yeah. Anything to add there, Jack Chap? Uh, Ryan, any questions you would you like to tell people what um, they could look forward to in the next video on data transformations? The next video that we will dedicate towards data transformations, we will try to not just cover as much transformations as possible, but also try to look at a specific case where you can take quote unquote messy data and just neaten it up, clean it up and be able to analyze it to get insights. Um, so if there are no questions from the chat, we will Give it a two minutes. See if anyone brave enough to ask a question. Challenge us. Um, yeah, anyone curious, want to learn something in particular? We do not have any questions at this time. However, we will be posting the video to the YouTube channel. So you guys could go there and still comment if you have any questions, um, suggest topics, um, methods of improvement, etc. So we want to thank you guys participating in our first power hour we will be live every wednesday from half two to half three eastern standard time and we would like for you guys to join us on this journey um, on continuous learning on power bi and bringing awareness um, thank you for your time ryan thank you for participating as well and we'll Pleasure to be here in the next session.
Yep. Ooh. I guess. Bye.